fast, right? Even faster than an F1 car. Much faster. However, every rocket launch is only half the story. The real challenge is bringing it back to Earth safely. And today we're going to talk about a key component of any rocket. It's recovery system. So if you're new to the channel, this is Project Helios, a student team's endeavour to break the UK altitude record and become the youngest team to fly a rocket to the stratosphere. Back to the video. So what is a recovery system? Well, you could probably guess that it helps to recover the rocket. But it's not that simple. Many rocketry sites in the UK don't have as much land as sites in the US, meaning when you launch a high altitude rocket, it, it can become an issue. Gefreyer? No, not a fryer. Gefreyer. Better. Okay, so Gefreyer will be not going that high. Roughly below 2 kilometers. But if we tackle the issue of altitude now, we can have a flight proven recovery system ready for Helios, which is our rocket we plan to launch next year. In a basic rocket, there is just one parachute. But the issue is you don't need the parachute until you land. So your rocket's coming really slowly down from the sky from about a kilometer up or however high you launched it. So let's say for an example, our rocket is one kilometer in the sky. Even if the rocket descends at 26 feet per second, it could take two minutes for your rocket to come back to Earth. And if you count wind in there, the rocket could land two kilometers away from where you launched it, which is a pretty long walk. Now imagine a rocket 20 kilometers in the sky. See the issue? Engineers came up with a better idea to tackle this. If we don't need the parachute until we land, why don't we deploy it before we land? One issue, a 5 kilogram rocket coming down from 10 kilometers could reach up to 300 meters per second before a parachute is deployed. The second the parachute is deployed, it would tear due to over 50 tons of force being exerted on it within less than a second. So how can we stop the rocket from accelerating so fast that it tears the parachute? Simple, a smaller parachute, known as a drogue, deploys at the top of the rocket's flight path, which is also known as apogee. The smaller drogue chute then limits the speed of the rocket to a much more manageable number, which helps the main parachute experience less impact resistance during its initial deployment. This system is known as dual deployment as there are dual parachutes. Okay, great, so now you have an understanding of the various deployment variations. However, Gefreyer is not using any of these. It's using a very unconventional system. A dual deployment system is really efficient. However, we are launching up to nearly 20 kilometers with Helios, and our launch site is about four nautical miles in diameter, which means that if we use dual deployment, we would still land outside of our recovery zone, which is not very safe, and you should always plan to stay within your recovery zone. So with Gefreyer, we are hovering between the fine line of a rocket and a falling missile. Imagine dual deployment, but without the drogue. But wait, won't the main parachute just tear? Not exactly. We are going to separate the rocket into two segments through the middle, which prevents it from facing straight down like a dart, and instead makes the rocket lay horizontally as it descends. This means that it has enough drag to not turn into a missile, but less drag than a drogue, which means that your rocket is much, much more efficient when it comes to recovery. You see what I mean by a fine line between a rocket and a falling missile? However, if done correctly, you have an amazingly efficient recovery system and an intact rocket. So Gefreya will be using a dual deployment system, but without the drogue parachute. I hope that makes more sense to you now. Sadly, I have run out of time, but there have been a few design changes to Gafira, so in the next video, I'll just run through the small changes. Subscribe so you don't miss the next video, and see you next time.